Hello, I'm Mati van Oof, and I'll be presenting the paper Fragment and Forge, Breaking Wi-Fi Through Frame Aggregation and Fragmentation. I'm currently a postdoctoral researcher at New York University Abu Dhabi, and I'll soon be starting as an assistant professor at KU Leuven. Let me first give a quick background on Wi-Fi security, and in particular, if we look at the last recent years, we can see that some major advancements have been made. For instance, WPA3 got updated to prevent the Dragon Blood attacks, and it now contains a feature to secure hotspots using asymmetric crypto. Additionally, some extra defenses, such as channel validation on beacon protection, have also been standardized. Finally, last year researchers formally modeled WPA2, and they showed that the patches against the key reinstallation attacks are sound. Unfortunately, despite these recent major advancements, I discovered flaws in all protected Wi-Fi networks, including WPA2 and WPA3. These findings consist of three design flaws on several implementation flaws, and I'll first focus on the design flaws, and in particular on the aggregation flaw. Now to understand this design flaw, I will first explain how aggregation works in Wi-Fi. The idea is that in Wi-Fi, it's very inefficient to send small packets. And that's because every Wi-Fi frame needs to have its individual header and it needs to be individually acknowledged. However, it's much more efficient to aggregate multiple packets into one larger Wi-Fi frame. With this in mind, the question now becomes how a receiver can detect whether a Wi-Fi frame contains a single network packet or whether it contains an aggregation of multiple network packets. And well, the answer is quite simple. The Wi-Fi header contains a flag that indicates whether the encrypted payload contains a single network packet or whether it contains multiple aggregated network packets. And as you can see here, when multiple packets are aggregated, the encrypted payload starts with the metadata about the first packet, followed by the actual content of the first packet, then it contains the metadata about the second packet, and so on. Now what is the design flaw here? Well, the problem is that this flag is not authenticated. This means that as an adversary, we can modify this flag, which will make the receiver process the decrypted payload in an unattended manner, and this will allow us to inject packets towards a victim. Now instead of boring you too much with details here, I'll instead explain the steps an attacker has to take in order to exploit this. First, the adversary must be within physical range of the victim and the access point. Second, the adversary needs to trick the victim into, for instance, downloading an image from the attacker's server. This causes the victim to set up a TCP connection with the attacker's server. In turn, the adversary will send a specially constructed IPv4 packet over this connection. This IPv4 packet will be encrypted as normal by the legitimate access point, but before the encrypted Wi-Fi frame arrives at the victim, the adversary will set the aggregated flag to make it seem that this is an aggregated frame. As a result of this, we can inject arbitrary packets towards the client. For instance, we can inject an ICMPv6 router advertisement that tricks the victim into using a malicious DNS server. Now, as you can see, this attack is not trivial because we need to be within physical range of the victim and we need to trick the victim into connecting to our server. However, by relying on an implementation flaw and access points, we can perform the attack without user interaction. This flaw was present in two out of four home access points, which indicates that this vulnerability is fairly common in practice. So that covers the first design flaw. The second design flaw is located in the so-called fragment cache of a Wi-Fi device. But let me first give a quick introduction to the fragmentation feature of Wi-Fi. In Wi-Fi, if you have a large frame, there's also a higher chance that this frame will become corrupted. And if this large frame indeed gets corrupted, we would have to send the complete frame again, and this is obviously quite inefficient. It's much better to split up a large frame into smaller fragments so that we can individually retransmit a fragment if needed. Additionally, in a protected Wi-Fi network, each fragment is separately encrypted and authenticated, and the header of the Wi-Fi frame also contains authenticated metadata that defines the place of the fragment in the original frame. In other words, the Wi-Fi header contains information 
that it allows the receiver to securely reassemble all fragments back into the original frame. Now, the design flaw here is that fragments are not removed from memory after disconnecting from a network. To illustrate this, imagine that we are targeting an iterable network. In this scenario, we as an attacker can spoof the MAC address of the victim, but use our own credentials to connect to the access point. Once connected to the network, we can then store a malicious fragment into the memory of the access point. And the access point will store this fragment in plain text, and it will save this fragment under the MAC address of the victim, and that's because we as an adversary were spoofing the victim's MAC address. When the adversary now disconnects, this malicious fragment will remain in the fragment cache of the access point. As a result, if the client now connects and also sends a fragmented frame, we can force the situation so that the fragment from the victim will be combined with our injected malicious fragment. In practice, we can abuse this design flaw to either exfiltrate fragments or to inject packets under the condition that we are targeting a hotspot-like network such as Aetherom, where users mutually distrust each other, and under the condition that the client sends fragmented frames. Note that it's quite rare for the client to send fragmented frames unless Wi-Fi 6 is used. What's also really interesting is that even the very old web protocol is affected by this design flaw and what will also be affected by the next design flaw that I'll be discussing. This shows that the discovered design flaws have been part of Wi-Fi since its introduction in 1997. Let me now move on to the third design flaw, which I call the mixed key attack. I'll briefly discuss the root cause of this vulnerability and refer to the paper for details. The root cause is that fragments that are decrypted under different keys are still reassembled by the receiver. Let me illustrate this as follows. First, we assume that the victim sends a frame encrypted using the current session key K, and we assume that this frame is split into two fragments. The adversary will only forward the first fragment to the access point, and will block the second fragment. We now assume that the victim will refresh the session key from K to M. This also means that certain packet counters will be reset back to 1, and some of these counters are used to reassemble fragments back to the correct original frame. If the victim now sends a new fragmented frame, the adversary can block the first fragment and only forward the second fragment to the access point. Because the packet counters were reset back to 1 when refreshing the session key, the access point will wrongly reassemble this fragment with the first fragment that was forwarded by the adversary, even though these two fragments were decrypted under different keys. This means that we as an adversary can trick a receiver to reassemble fragments that belong to different frames. In other words, we can mix the content of different frames. In practice, this can be abused to exfiltrate data under the condition that someone in a network sends fragmented frames, that the victim will connect to the server of the attacker, and under the condition that the network will periodically refresh the session key of clients. Now, by combining this design flaw with a very common implementation flaw, we can avoid the third condition, but even then this design flaw is very hard to abuse in practice. So right now, this attack mainly appears to be an academic concern, but we should still update devices as soon as possible, since we never know when someone might discover a more practical variant of the attack. Apart from these design flaws, I also discovered various widespread implementation flaws and I will briefly discuss some of them. The first set of implementation flaws can be abused to very easily inject frames into a protected Wi-Fi network. In particular, an adversary can often inject a plaintext Wi-Fi frame by carefully constructing this frame. For example, sometimes an implementation wrongly accepts a plaintext frame if it is fragmented, or if it has a broadcast receiver address, or it wrongly accepts plaintext frames while the client is still connecting to the network. Additionally, sometimes a plaintext frame is accepted when it resembles a handshake message. Surprisingly, a lot of devices are affected by one of these vulnerabilities. For example, iOS on macOS was affected, some Android devices were affected, home and professional access points were affected, and so on. Unfortunately, 
these set of vulnerabilities really make it trivial to inject frames. Perhaps even more surprising, devices that don't support fragmentation or aggregation were still vulnerable to attacks as well. In particular, systems such as OpenBSD on the expressive IoT chips don't support fragmentation and instead they treat all fragmented frames as full frames. Unfortunately, under the right conditions, this can still be abused to inject frames. This also shows that all Wi-Fi devices are affected by one or more vulnerabilities. To test whether a device is affected by the discovered designer implementation flaws, I created a tool that can test both clients and access points. This tool contains close to 50 test cases and can be found at the following link. I now want to end with a quick discussion. You may be wondering why it took more than two decades to discover these design flaws. And I think there's two reasons for this. First, without using modified drivers, some of the attacks will fail because important fields will be silently overwritten by the driver. And perhaps more important, in the past, security researchers didn't pay much attention to fragmentation and aggregation functionality. There's also some long-term lessons that we can learn. First, we should adopt the fences early, even if there's only theoretic concerns about the vulnerabilities. Second, we should properly isolate security contexts in both the specification and in implementations. In particular, we should properly separate data that was decrypted under different keys. And finally, we should keep fuzzing devices, and here the Wi-Fi lines can help by doing basic tests while certifying devices. To conclude, I discovered three new design flaws in Wi-Fi, as well as multiple implementation flaws. Some of these flaws are trivial to exploit, and for more information you can visit the following website. Thank you for your attention.